Yo, what up guys, so in today's video I want to show you how to basically, what to do after you've installed your Kali Linux machine. Now, the first step is to update any software or any security features, any patches that are pending to be installed. Now, why, why should you do this? If you've installed, just freshly installed your Kali Linux and you're looking what to do, you can just skip this step because it's not, it's not really important for you. However, if you have been using Kali for a couple weeks, or you've just left it for a couple of weeks and as you know because obviously everything's getting updated all the time so what I suggest doing is go to your terminal uh, go to your terminal right this is what I'm doing sudo apt upgrade and I will just explain what this does in a minute just do what I'm doing right now put your password in and as you can see and as you can see it gives you everything that needs to be upgraded or what will be upgraded as you can see, right? Sudo, sudo is basically sort of the user or super user, or actually what it means is super user do, right? Um, just basically permit higher permissions because in Linux, usually what like, if something requires higher permission, it usually is something that changes the actual file system or the like the actual computer structure itself. That's why you usually do sudo or a sample of some just specific uh, specific commands need extra permissions. That's how just Linux works. APT upgrades just upgrades the whole Kali Linux, right? And as you can see, you should get something along what I'm getting and you just press Y and then you should, as, for you it'll be zero. Well, for me it's because I've been doing this for a far time now um, because I have to check some stuff. As you can see, it connects to Kali, which is the original website of Kali. Not the fastest, but it's okay. And this, I'll just leave this running. I'm not really fussed about this. So this is your first step. You should upgrade your operating system. So the security patches and patches, everything is up to date. Now, the second step is to configure your network adapter. So go to your left corner of your virtual machine, either as virtual box, anything, right? Manage virtual machine settings. And you will get this window now. Uh, it'll be the fifth thing from the top, unless you have some extra stuff. It'll be network adapter. Make sure it's connected. This is optional. You can have connected a power on. However, if you don't know what you're doing, I recommend turning it on. Now, there's four options you can actually set uh, free, technically. Bridged, NAT, host, and custom. Now, I if you don't know what this means, I suggest looking it up. I will tell you, explain everything. So, bridged. As you can see, bridge bridge is not very good because it actually connects you directly to the network. That's definitely don't want to connect yourself to the actual network. NAT shares the IP address. It's the safest option to use. I mean, the safest option is to disable Wi-Fi, uh, disable Wi-Fi completely. But obviously, you need Wi-Fi to confirm some stuff online, especially if you're learning and if you want to download anything. So host host is also you should avoid host because as you can see, it basically connects you to the actual network as well. You shouldn't, it allows everyone in the network actually connect to this Kali Linux. That's what I've been told as well. Custom, custom is if you want to basically connect or network a couple virtual machines together. I've posted a video how to actually connect them together and distribute uh, viruses and files between them. So if you want to check it out, go ahead. This is Linux. basically make sure it's NAT and if you want to use um, custom specific specific virtual networks, make sure you use VMNet2 or anything like that. I suggest using between 2 to 7 and from 9 to 19 because these work, I've tested it before. Um, okay, so as soon as you change, right, change your setting, make sure you click OK. Uh, go to your right corner of your virtual machine. I just need to change that. There you go. So make sure you go to right corner, edit connections. Go to now for you you might have nothing you might have something i don't know so make sure whatever you have if not you need to add it i will show you how to add it so you just go ethernet the gear ipv4 you can change the name and make sure it's automatic dhcp that's all you need to do for this now how to network couple devices together all you do is create another one name it whatever you want ipv4 manual now if you don't know anything about networking, just do what I have, it will be fine, right? IP address 192.168.11.139. Now, because this is a class C address, you can change the IP address, you can change the last three digits to whatever you want. Between two to between two and 254, you'll be fine, right? Just change, change it, if you leave it if you want. 
make sure it's between 2, 2, 5, 4, right? Be, make sure 2 and 2, 5, 4. So it can be 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever you want. Net, the subnet mask, network uh, network mask, whatever, and because it's a class C address, it'll be 2, 4, right? Because it's basically 255, 255, 0. Sorry, 255, 255, 255, 0, right? So it's three octets of the subnet mask. Gateway is 192.168.11.1. Leave this as it is. If you don't know what you're doing, just change the IP address to what I have. You can change it to 2, right? And you'll be fine. And make sure that if you actually imagine what you're connected to. So if you're connected to um, custom-specific virtual network, make sure you use VMNet. And if you're connected to NAT, make sure you use NAT, right? That's what we need to do for now. Now, what I do is sometimes because yeah, when you download virtual machines, sometimes the display or the resolution is not good. What I suggest doing is typing in, ty uh, press your Windows key or go to your left corner, type display, enter. And as you can see, it shows us um, resolution settings. So what we want to do is click resolution, click your resolution, whatever your resolution is. Usually it's 192 by 1080 or 920 by 1040. 1440, sorry. Scale, leave it as it is. Refresh rate, you can change this. My monitor goes to 165 Hz. Rotation, you can change this, but I don't suggest this. Reflection, I don't suggest. So why well, suggest changing as a resolution and refresh rate? And that should be you. Now the fourth step, why I suggest doing is um, changing your password because password is important to make sure this is encrypted. Well, encrypted. So basically, no one has access. Who's not supposed to have access to the virtual machine? Because you might have, get, you might get in trouble, right? Well, so what you need to do is, go, you should go to users, users and groups. As you say, as you can see, Griffin, this is my account, right? What you should do is either manage groups or add. Why is it just doing? Is it's just changing the password? And so basically, you can change your Griffin. You can change your um, name. You can change your account type. I don't suggest changing it. Just leave it as it is and password. Password. You can set your password, right? Make sure that when you ask on login, make sure you have this turned on because this is important. Change, and you can change your password. You can generate a random. I don't suggest having this on because you'll forget it. Why? Well, just change it to whatever you want, right? Now, sort of the fifth step to make sure you people don't know you're using Kali or how to protect yourself is installing Kali who am I so what you do is go to your terminal so you'll be sudo install sudo sudo apt install um Kali who am I now for me I won't be able to because I already have installed as you can see it's done right so I already had Kali who am I installed I'm actually sorry I made a mistake so basically because Kali who am I cannot be downloaded what you need to do is on github and install Kali who am I itself uh, so what you do is just go into internet, any internet you have, you can use Tor browser, which is, this will be actually the sixth step using Tor browser on your Kali. Make sure you don't actually do anything illegal, right? Because you still being get tracked. There's been cases of de-anonymization. But if you do anything, no, nothing illegal, you'll be fine. They're not going to, you're not going to get a warrant on your, on your house, right? So just go to your internet, go to DuckDuckGo, because that's the privacy browser. Go to Kali, who am I, GitHub, make sure that you copy the same thing I'm doing. Over Dogen, the first thing, you copy this, you can close this terminal, you open a new terminal, and what you do is git clone, and you just copy the link. Now, in Kali, as you can see, it's a bit different than Windows. So what you do to copy is Control shift c and Control shift v to actually implement it or paste it. And as you can see, I'm not gonna, that's actually gonna clone for me, that's fine, it's not installed. So basically, as soon as you install it, as you're ready, I'll actually show you how to run it. So basically, all you do is sudo, sudo Kali, who am I? Sorry, I forgot about the command. <laughs> uh, you just put your password in again, and as you can see, it changes your, changes your, um, basically everything here. You press enter at the end and as you can see it should be changed. I'll actually show you if you go to the NS leak test, that's how you actually check if your IP is um, visible or not. And your IP address, as you can see, this is definitely not my IP address. 
we can do extended test to make sure that there's no DNS leak. Now this is actually the this is sort of the best way to check if you if you have a DNS leak or IP address leak, and because it's run by IVP and it's a privacy freedom fighters if you want to call that. As you can see, they have their own VPN, which is run somewhere in I don't know where it's actually run. Somewhere, somewhere in the world. Might be in Netherlands, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure where it's run this spot. I don't really know much about this spot. I know that IVPN is run by um, Freedom sort of fighters, if you want to call that. Basically Freedom, Internet Freedom. Um, protesters or whatever. I don't know really what to call them, right? Sorry if I, uh, sorry if I know what to do. So as you can see, it said Netherlands, but it says now it's in Norway. I can assure you I'm not in Norway, right? Um, so, hope I've helped you how to sort of get around Kali Linux. I'll make a tutorial what to do and how to how to learn Kali Linux because it's a different operating system. I've actually had to learn myself. It wasn't easy because I never had no idea what to do. I am a Windows user. I've been using Windows f since I was born, technically. Uh, I used Mac OS maybe twice in my life, and I using been using Windows my whole life, so I am a Windows expert and sort of a Linux expert as well. Um, I don't know much about Mac OS. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, and comment what I could improve in my next videos, I'll be very thankful. Hope I could actually help you with this quick guide, and... See you in the next video. Make sure to check out my other videos and my other tutorials because I post, try post two to three videos or as much as I can weekly. Sometimes I generally don't have time. I'm trying my best and I'm trying actually to make a giveaway for you guys. I'm not sure what it will be, but maybe it will be some sort of VPN subscriptions. I'm not sure. But we'll see. Okay. Thank you. See you in the next video.